Critical health. Critical health is the point where the body can no longer survive on its own. At this level, survival depends on constant medical intervention. Machines may breathe for you, pumps may keep your heart working, and powerful substances may fight infections or pain. Organs often begin to fail, making even simple functions like eating or moving impossible without help. People in critical health usually remain in hospitals or intensive care units, surrounded by teams of doctors and nurses. Life here is measured not in strength or independence, but in whether the body can last another day. Families face difficult choices, balancing slim hopes of recovery with the reality of decline. Critical health represents the very bottom of the spectrum, a state where life can end at any moment. Poor health. Poor health is the level where daily life is defined by constant struggle. At this stage, chronic illness, disability, or untreated conditions make even simple activities exhausting. Pain, fatigue, or shortness of breath may appear almost every day, limiting independence and freedom. Work, hobbies, and relationships often suffer as the body demands more rest than action. Doctors may prescribe multiple medications just to manage symptoms, while hospital visits become routine. Some people in poor health can live at home, but only with help from family or caregivers. Unlike critical health, survival is not the immediate concern, but quality of life is heavily reduced. Poor health represents a state where the body functions, but far below its potential, leaving little room for comfort or growth. Fragile health Fragile health describes a body that works, but with little resilience. People at this level may not face constant pain or disability, yet they are vulnerable to illness and setbacks. A simple cold can turn into weeks of recovery, and minor injuries linger instead of healing quickly. The immune system often struggles, making infections more frequent. Doctor visits, tests, and medications are common, not as emergency measures, but as routine parts of life. Energy levels may swing sharply, with with some days feeling manageable and others overwhelming. Fragile health often limits participation in sports, travel, or demanding jobs, since stress can easily tip the balance. Unlike poor health, independence is possible here, but it feels unstable, as though wellness is temporary and always at risk. Below average health. Below average health is the point where daily habits drag the body down. People at this level may not be seriously ill, but choices like poor diet, lack of exercise, smoking, or excessive drinking steadily wear on them. Energy often runs low, making work or school feel harder than it should. Minor illnesses come often, and recovery takes longer than average. Sleep may be restless, weight may creep upward, and stress feels harder to handle. Doctors might start warning about early signs of chronic problems problems, like high blood pressure or diabetes. While independence is not in question, the body is running below its potential. Below average health is a reminder that neglect today often becomes illness tomorrow. Average health. Average health is the state of most people's bodies. At this level, it works reliably enough to handle school, work, and relationships without major limits. Energy is steady, recovery from colds or small injuries is quick, and doctor visits are occasional rather than constant. Diet and exercise may not be perfect, but they are good enough to keep things running. Most people feel generally fine, though rarely at their best, managing life's demands without intentional focus on health. People in average health can do sport, travel, and take part in most activities without worrying too much about their condition. Small issues like headaches, stress, or minor aches do appear, but they rarely stop daily routines. It's a comfortable state, predictable and safe, but rarely inspiring. Average health marks the middle ground, steady and common, but many feel stuck here due to poor decisions in lifestyle and diet, which prevent them from ascending to the next level. And without change, that middle ground can quietly become their ceiling. Good health. Good health is when the body feels balanced and reliable every day. People at this level have high baseline energy levels, recover quickly from illnesses, and rarely need to see a doctor. Exercise, sleep, and diet may not be fully optimized, but they are consistent enough to keep the body strong and the mind clear. Small healthy habits have turned into second nature, making it easier to stay consistent without overthinking. Stress is easier to manage, and minor aches don't interfere with daily 
daily life, momentum starts to build up naturally as the benefits of routine care compound over time. People in good health can handle work, social life, and hobbies while being confident that their body will keep up with their goals. While still leaving room for improvement, it's the stage where daily life starts to feel lighter and more enjoyable. Very good health. Very good health is the stage where wellness goes beyond stability and starts to feel powerful. At this level, people enjoy strong fitness, consistent energy, and a low risk of common diseases. Exercise is regular and effective, diet is balanced, and sleep restores the body fully. Illness is rare and rather uneventful as recovery is swift. Stress is manageable, and the body can handle hardships like demanding workdays, long travels, or any challenging physical activity without breaking down. At this level, health provides both comfort in the present and resilience for the future. It is proof of a well-cared-for body and builds the conditions most likely to support a long and active life. Peak Health Peak health is the highest level most people can realistically reach. At this stage, the body is trained, conditioned, and performing near its full capacity. People here may be athletes, dedicated fitness enthusiasts, or individuals with lifestyles built around physical excellence. Endurance, strength, and flexibility are all highly developed, allowing the body to push limits seemingly out of reach to the majority. Recovery is very quick, not just from illness, but from intense exercise or stress. Diet, sleep, and routines are methodically managed to maintain this edge. While peak health does not make someone invincible, it maximizes what the body can achieve when discipline and care align. It is the closest the average human can come to unlocking their body's full potential. Genetic Health Genetic health is the rarest level of all, reserved for those whose DNA gives them extraordinary advantages. These are people born with mutations that protect them from illness or make their bodies unusually strong. Some have exceptional endurance hardwired into their muscles, while others stay lean or recover rapidly, no matter their habits. For example, some carry mutations like those in the LRP5 gene that make their bones nearly unbreakable, while others have DNA variations, such as mutations in a gene called PCSK9, which lower LDL cholesterol levels independently of lifestyle. There are even rare individuals, such as members of Tibetan populations with EPAS1 gene variants, whose bodies process oxygen more efficiently, giving them near-athletic performance without training. A few families even have genes linked to slower aging and longer lifespans. Unlike peak health, this level cannot be trained for or earned. It is written into a person's biology from birth. Scientists study these individuals to understand how their unique traits might one day help medicine improve health for everyone. Genetic health represents the outer edge of human capabilities, a reminder that even our strongest efforts unfold within boundaries set by DNA. If you like this video, make sure to watch these two and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next.